it's been 130 days and I'm still stuck at home. So I've got plenty of time to literally kill. So I decided to do something that always got me excited, which was nothing other than custom ROM testing. If you remember, this is the exact Lenovo P2 that I unboxed about three years ago. So this has aged pretty well, but this is the only backup phone that I have right now. So I had to extend its life with a newer version of Android. And I also wanted it to be pretty stable and free of bugs because I will be using it as my secondary phone. And that was when I found the Derp Fest OS. It looked pretty promising and feature packed. So I decided to give it a try. So I downloaded it, flashed it on my phone and I used it for about two months. And here are my thoughts. First things first, this is probably the best boot up animation I've ever seen in any custom ROM. So whoever did this did an amazing job. All right, I was using this phone as my secondary phone, as I said, which usually involves mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, of course, for tagging friends on memes and uh, scrolling through opinionated tweets on Twitter and of course, YouTube. With this kind of usage, the phone was stable overall, but I would like to get into details with pros and cons. All right, the number one pro has to be the list of customization options this ROM is packed with. Alright, starting with theming, we have the accent picker, which allows us to choose any color of our choice, or we can choose from the list of colors given, which sounds cool and also looks cool. I mean, look at those names. We have Spotify green, OnePlus red, Xiaomi orange, and why not Poco yellow. So the next thing on the pros list is the rounded corners feature, which might seem very simple and subtle, but it definitely improves the overall look and aesthetics of the screen. It makes the device to look much more modern than it actually is. Moving on, we have a lot of options under gesture settings too, with support for gesture based system navigation, which is by default baked into Android 10. And all the gestures like swipe and hold to go to recents and swipe to go home and swipe left and right to switch apps works fine. While we are there, we do have the option to enable fingerprint gestures, which when turned on lets you to navigate the system using the fingerprint sensor. A single tap acts as back function and tapping and holding on brings up the recent menu. Next up, we have a very cool feature called live captions, which essentially brings up a live subtitle to any video that is playing on the device. And I found this to be super useful and it works on any app. I have tested it with YouTube and Twitter and it just works fine. This is a very simple yet so functional feature called caffeine mode, which essentially stops the screen from turning off. It lets you set a timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or even forever with infinity. This is really helpful when you're downloading very big files with say torrents, and you do not want the download to get interrupted with the screen turning off. And trust me, this really helps. Apart from these, there are tons and tons of other customization options, which honestly I could not cover in this single video, but I'm sure you would love it. Speaking on which, there are a few things which you might not actually love. And I would like to mention those too. Starting with this option that lets you switch the brightness slider to the bottom of the quick settings panel, which brings up the first con that is no brightness slider in landscape mode, which was super annoying while watching videos in YouTube, Netflix or Amazon Prime. Next con was with camera and especially with Gcam mods. I did try installing multiple versions of Gcam mods, but it didn't help much. Firstly, the photos got way too longer to get processed and in most times the app would even completely freeze. Secondly, there was this green tint issue, especially with the front camera and there seemed to be no solution to this problem. And another annoying con was this persistent HD notification, which always shows up whenever Volte is enabled and there seems to be no option to remove it. Another slight inconvenience is that you cannot download and install the Netflix app from Google Play Store directly due to its restrictions on unlocked devices, which is acceptable because anyways, you can still sideload the app with APK files and that is exactly what I did and it still works fine. So I don't see any big issue there. So those were pretty much all the issues I had with this custom ROM and let me talk about something which is not an issue and that is battery life. The battery life was pretty good and I was able to get a screen on time of about six to seven hours in an average, which is not a bad thing at all. And there were no signs of idle battery drain too. So on the whole, the battery life was good. 
and by the way we have this cool charging animation and not to forget we have a notification led which changes colors to notify about the status of the charging so overall i do think this is one of the best custom roms available for lenovo p2 right now so i definitely recommend this rom to anybody who would like to experience the latest version of android on the 3 year old phone so there you go i'll leave the link for the xda post where you can find the download link for the latest version of the custom rom in case you are interested so that brings us to the end of this video thanks a lot for watching this is hariharan from gadgets connector signing off peace out